Hey Bears, Eric here, and I thought it would be fun to take a look back at astroturfing attempts from these anti-fandom chud channels. The times where they have tried to astroturf something and they've rolled the dice, they've thrown the dart, and hope they hit their target. <laughs> so, uh, because trust and believe, they don't know entertainment. They do not know. They have a method, right? The astroturfing is a method. They kind of pick a target, they start talking about it negatively, and hope that it ends up being bad or that fans don't like it or it doesn't make any money. There's several things that could happen in that process to make it so that their astroturfing looks uh, extremely justified and successful. So I thought we'd start out with X-Men 97. It's a, it's a recent property that was heavily astroturfed up until like a, a week or so before it came out um, by a lot of channels. But I want to look specifically at Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers because it's kind of been a meme recently that Jeremy made a video two months ago about X-Men 97 like basically being DOA and then cricket since then. Actually, I think he did, we'll, we'll take a look, but I think he did one more video about Bo DeMaio being uh, fired or splitting from Disney Marvel. Uh, but outside of that, nothing, no other videos uh, that I could find from him. So we're gonna take a look at those two videos. And if you guys end up liking this format and you want me to do this with other things, like go back and see if there were any successful astroturfing attempts, uh, let me know. But there's two videos, they're very short. This is gonna be fun. Grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a snack, and uh, let's watch this, debunk it. Uh, if we have to. What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video. And today we are talking about X-Men 97. Everybody is excited for X-Men 97 after seeing the trailer, after seeing the marketing, after seeing the nostalgia all over the place. Everyone is loving it. Well, at least... By the way, this title of this video is X-Men 97 already ruined, already ruined by Disney wokeness. And this again was about two months ago. I don't know the exact date, but it said two months ago when I looked the video up the uninitiated are loving it because if you've been paying Ooh. attention to Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Pixar, anything they've been doing for the last several years, well, you probably know that there's a lot of bait involved in order to pull you in so that they can then push their propaganda and their nonsense. Now, So he's suggesting that the uninitiated, which I guess would be us, the fans of the show, uh, that we are not aware that Disney has a bait and switch thing going on. Uh, and so he's suggesting that X-Men 97 at this point was going to be a bait and switch that it wasn't going to be what they were advertising it to be, which I thought was kind of funny. Let me explain to you quickly before we watch the rest of this, why I think that's funny. Um, the astroturfing included a lot of negative press about news articles, things that people involved with the creative process said uh, about the show. Um, you know, Bo DeMaio being an openly gay man, uh, a person of color talking about his experiences with that like all these things were things that were they that they said were being injected into the show so it wouldn't be bait and switch if that were the case bait and switch would be if they acted like the show had nothing diverse in it at all and then you go to watch the show and it ends up being diverse uh but according to these guys uh the show was doa because of all the diversity talk that was happening prior to the show coming out so that's literally not a bait and then switch. That's not what it is. Anyway, let's continue. Now, again, I love X-Men, the animated series. I think it's probably the definitive animated series for superheroes. It's phenomenal. And um, I think it actually did more for X-Men than even the comics or anything. I mean, the animated series was amazing. I won't disagree with them there. I think the X-Men cartoon did um, sort of help keep the X-Men. Uh, they didn't need help to be on the spotlight, but comics were struggling in the late 90s. And the cartoon definitely kept the momentum going for the X-Men. Amazing. And we got this trailer for X-Men 97. And look, there's a lot to like about this trailer for sure. I had some criticisms of it on Geeks and Gamers Daily, but overall, uh, I think there's some pretty good stuff in here. I Some of the animation bothered me and um, some of the character models, like not that they're bad, but like Rogue, I didn't think looked great. Um, the whole Rogue thing was so stupid because the most recent episode as of recording this was basically a Rogue-centric episode, and she looked fantastic in that episode. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I mean, all the art is really solid. Um, anyway. I just think there was something about, like, the background animations were pretty good, but the character models didn't seem to line up with it at all times. Oh, okay. That's just me. Um, as someone that loved the animated series, obviously you have Storm, um, which... Listen, as I said, I know she had the uh, the mohawk in the Iconic. comics. That is not why Disney is going with the SJW. Oh, it's not why they're going with the SJW haircut? There was something else. There was some other motive for them doing that. So they had her in the mohawk, according to Jeremy, and a lot of these other channels, because there was some other motive for that. They were, they were doing it to push her as a 
linebacker manly character. If you watch some of these other channels, I've covered other videos where people said that. Uh, when in fact that did not happen, we are uh, up to episode seven as of me recording this video, and the Mohawk is gone. There was no ulterior motive to the Mohawk. There was no weird, insidious propaganda about her having that haircut. But these guys wanted you to believe that going to the series. It was a huge talking point going to the series, and now no one talks about it. You haircut? It's just not. It's just not. Um, but again. You know, a lot of people looked at it and said, hey, man, I'm really looking forward to this. It looks great, yada, yada, yada. Totally mm -hmm. understood. Totally understood. But we got a little bit of an issue suddenly because this is how it goes with Disney. The moment that, you know, you see something you're maybe a little bit excited about. Well, then we get this right here from X-Men Updates. Okay. Morph's characterization stuff, yeah. in X-Men 97. This is a lighter take on the character who is non-binary and has an interesting buddy relationship with Wolverine, the character's past with Mr. Sinister, the show's villain, could also come into play. I want to say, looking at that description, it makes total sense based on what we've seen on the show so far. So Mr. Sinister has been a massive impact uh, in Morse life. Uh, they've talked about it on the show. They've mentioned it several times. I'm pretty sure we might see more of that in these last two or three episodes, since we know that that's going to be like the big thing at the end of the season, uh, the buddy relationship with Wolverine, other than like one joke that was a little bit edgy. It's basically just been a really good friendship between the two characters. Uh, Morph being non-binary, uh, they call Morph they. There's been no episode about it. There's been no speeches about it. There's been nothing along those lines because first of all, it would make no sense to have that conversation on a show based in the nineties when we know that, that, the talking points about uh, non-binary gender identities didn't happen until much later. Uh, and even the people behind the creative said that they were like, it wouldn't make sense to talk about that uh, on a show that was based in the nineties. So all of that makes total sense. And boom, done. See you later. It's over. I retweeted this simply put, fuck this show. Um, Ooh. Again, it's Disney. What do you expect? We saw Bob Iger the other day. We saw the leaked call from Bob Iger. Again, let me play that for you. The leaked call from Bob Iger the other day where he puts it all into perspective right here. Bob Iger says it. About this uh, eloquently um, since he's become CEO. I'll, I'll say a couple of things about it. You know, we tended to uh, shy away from politics. Uh, and in doing so, I think we've shied away from talking about issues that aren't political at all, like the issues that we're talking about today. Um, because we believe in doing so, maybe it, looked like, it looks like we're taking a stand. Well, in that reality. Well, then let me, I want to clear that up. What he's talking about is how a lot of these folks in Jeremy's space take social issues and community issues and try to make them political. That's what he's talking about. Like the idea of politicizing gender identity and sexuality is something that people who are not part of that community have taken sort of a political stance on, but they're not inherently political. They're social, they're uh, community driven things that people in those uh, groups have to fight for that politically because they're being oppressed by people who consider social status to be a political thing like Jeremy and so many other people in the space. We should be taking a stand. I take, by the way, I, t I take responsibility for this. I was CEO for 15 years. And so I, you know, I, I manage the, the company's public facing um, processes and, and um, you know, how we were portraying ourselves. And I think that we have to be less cautious, as Bob, I think, was just alluding to about such things and not be concerned, like just commenting about what happened in Washington last week. That's not political on our part at all. We, we know that what we saw was fundamentally wrong and that it was rooted in hatred and disrespect and contempt and intolerance. And we should feel free as a company to comment about that without retribution. They should. It's a, it's a free speech thing. And again, these guys who seem to be champions of free speech always want to police other people's speech when it's not conservative, when it doesn't speak to their values. That's Bob Iger. He also says, hey, we did Black Panther. How great are we? A great example of that. Or Tiana. Or, of course, Black Panther is one of the great examples of that. I, I, I allow those things to make me feel a bit complacent in a sense. Not that I, I wanted to be that way, but I thought, wow, we did Black Panther. How great are we? And that is Bob Iger's mentality. So yeah, he's, he's happy that they were able to release a movie that was suppressed by Ike Perlmutter because of the fact that it was a black lead superhero. You guys say it's not supposed to be about race, right? This is, this is their 
argument is that it's not supposed to be about race. So if it's not supposed to be about race and you know that someone like Ike Perlmutter was preventing Black Panther from coming out because he didn't believe that a black superhero could make money for Marvel, then it was about race. It absolutely was. And therefore, the response to that has to be about race as well, because that is what it's rooted in. So if you don't want it to be about race, then stop pushing back so hard against it. Yeah. Uh, so again, for those that are excited about X-Men 97, don't let me rain on your parade. Mm. Go for it. It'd be excited for it. Love it. Have at it. I've been through this way too many times with Disney and Hollywood and all of this. And um, there was some nostalgia bait in that trailer for sure. And I, I don't have a problem with nostalgia as long as it's nostalgia for the right reasons and not meant to pull you in so that they can then push their nonsense. And that. So we're going to stop the video there. It's pretty much done. But uh, that's the thing is they were saying that it was going to be a bait and switch. I don't see how it could be a bait and switch when this was the release prior to it coming out. What are they baiting you in? If, if the nostalgia is there, so is all of this. Unless you understand that this stuff, like you know this stuff isn't a big deal. That would be the only reason why you would think it's a bait and switch is if you truly believe something like this, a character who honestly doesn't get that much time in the show. Morph is not really a massive part of the series. There's a few characters they're focusing on in this first season and Morph is not one of them. Uh, Morph has cool moments where they change into like, different people and get to use their powers and stuff like that. That's really about it. And then their relationship with Wolverine. It's pretty much it. Let's watch a follow-up video to this one about Bo DeMaio. And then I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on all of this and why we are in the position we're in right now. All right. So the title of this one is X-Men 97 creator fired by Disney woke on woke crime. Before we get into this, I want to make it very clear. I still have no idea. We still have no idea why Bo parted ways with Disney. There's a lot of rumors out there, things people are saying, not very good stuff. So this is not me defending Bo DeMaio. I think it's a little weird to stand on the front lines for somebody when you have no idea what they did. So once we find out what happened, which who knows what it is, right now Bo DeMaio is commenting on social media, being very open about X-Men 97, and Disney doesn't seem, seem to have an issue with that. So I'm not totally sure what happened. But this was the second and last video on the official Geeks and Gamers page by Jeremy um, since the show has been released. X-Men 97 showrunner Bo DeMeo has been fired weeks before the woke premiere, sorry, the premiere of mm. X-Men 97 on Disney+. Plus. Now, I'm a huge fan of X-Men the Animated Series, as are most of you that are watching this video, because X-Men the Animated Series was peak. And, um, I mean, I just don't really care about X-Men 97, uh, mainly because of the people involved in it and I don't have any faith in them whatsoever. And he so here we are again. This is so weird to me. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger here. This is so weird to me um, how these guys think that we should be supporting movies and TV shows with conservatives in them, with um, Trump supporters in them, with people who don't support LGBTQIA+. We're, we're supposed to look beyond that and just focus on the content that is there, like the movies, TV shows, cartoons, music, whatever it might be. But then they're the first ones to jump out and be like, I'm not going to support this thing because it's got gay people involved in making it, or it's got trans people in it, or the, they talk about social and political things. Like, are we supposed to like detach from that? Is that what we're supposed to be doing? I'm just, I, I'm trying to figure it out. Are we supposed to detach the social activism of people on, on, uh, in public and things they do in public, we're supposed to detach that from the media they're making or not. Let's continue. And here you have Bo DeMeo, who has been celebrated for his sexuality and his race. Now he's being fired. I guess Disney just doesn't like gay black men. I mean, this really seems toxic. Why would you fire a gay black man just weeks before the premiere of the show that he was the showrunner on, where he stunningly and bravely introduced a non-binary character? Disney, why are you so toxic? I think it's it's always funny to me when they make the jokes about the virtue signaling stuff to me, it's just like, do you not, I mean, do you believe it or do you not believe it? I guess it's part of the game they play is we're not supposed to know. Uh, it keeps it light, keeps it light over there. It says in an unusual situation on the eve of a project 
Knight's debut. The writer-producer who worked on Moon Knight and Blade will no longer be promoting the show or moving forward with future seasons. This is from The Hollywood Reporter. Mm -hmm. But early last week, Marvel and DeMeo suddenly parted ways. His company email was deactivated, and cast and crew were informed he would no longer be on the project. DeMeo's Instagram account, once a source of X-Men updates, was deleted. No reason for the firing was given. This sounds like something really bad happened. This sounds like this dude had some really bad stuff and they have acted very swiftly. Imagine that a person that was hired strictly for their sexuality and their race now has a bunch of problems. That word strictly is very loaded. Um, we don't know that sis. We don't know. Like, or what is like, do you have inside information? Do you know that they hired Bo strictly because he's a gay black guy? Do you know that for sure? Or are you projecting your insecurities and your anger? Um, let us know. Uh, write in, please. I say it ain't so. Marvel had no comment. DeMeo's representatives did not return calls for comment, and the emails to the showrunner uh, yielded no response. Marvel announced DeMeo's hiring in March of 2021. The move was met with some level of excitement. Uh, and, of course, there it is. Uh, his identity as a gay black man on the project. Mm -hmm. Oh, it got us so excited. Representation matters. Um, and it says, uh, and made it a point to talking about how the press, about how growing up as an adopted son of white parents with a Korean sister in the South, made the X-Men characters and their struggles for acceptance by society feel personal to him. Of course, of course. His silence on social media. I want to say the reason why people like Jeremy are so um, sarcastic and get so annoyed when people like myself or other people in marginalized communities see themselves in material like the x-men as marginalized the reason why they get so annoyed by that they do not understand struggles not the same struggles that marginalized communities understand they don't know what it's like to be in the position of these characters they don't know what it's like to be written in a in a role uh on a show as a marginalized person and then have the opportunity to share that with the world and then have other people who are marginalized see that and go hey I understand that. I get all the coding in this. I see what this means. And it means something to me, which is what makes these stories so good. And instead of sitting back and going, I'm going to take this opportunity to not be an asshole and learn something about people who are different than myself, take a chance on hearing them out and seeing what it is about them and their lives that connects with these characters. Instead of doing that, I'm going to put up this fucking gate, this gate in front of me, this wall in front of me and just put my fingers in my ears and go, eh, I can't hear you. Um, it is the most privileged response to this. It's also the most tone deaf response to this uh, because he has no idea what it's like to, to struggle with marginalization because he's had the privilege of never having to do that. And these guys don't understand when it comes to the idea of privilege in any regard, it doesn't mean that you've never struggled in your life. It means that you don't understand the struggles of other marginalized communities because you've never had to suffer the same things they've had to suffer. And of course, people that are watching this support geeks and gamers, you're going to listen to me say that and you're going to go, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, blah, 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 whatever. But this is exactly why we're in the position we're in now where there's so much hatred and anger and all of these like diversity things or big stories. Because if we just sat back and respected each other and had an opportunity for people to, I don't know, open the doors up for people who do not have the same, uh, they're not afforded the same opportunities as certain demographics. If we allowed that to happen, uplifted people and gave them a chance to shine, maybe communication would be a little bit better. But that's not going to happen on the internet. It's not going to happen here. <laughs> Trust and believe it's not going to happen here. Yeah, has been acute as uh, he was a prolific poster sharing X-Men tidbits as well as shirtless pictures of himself from the gym. Uh, for a time, he also ran a non-explicit OnlyFans account, all of which inspired the LGBTQ publication out uh, to declare him the sexiest gay Marvel writer and showrunner to know. Oh, my God, man. Uh, yeah, that's part of our community. It's part of our culture. It's out magazine, just like you have, you know, uh, magazine and publications that uh, talk about heterosexual stuff and beauty and heterosexuality. I mean, it's just, that's the world, man. What do you, do you want gay magazines to not talk about people, give them credit for being sexy? Like, aren't you guys the ones that argue that people in the queer community and the woke community don't like sexy people? And now you have a problem with somebody being awarded something for being sexy. It's literally like, you just don't want to see us do shit.
get shit or be part of anything. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, but at times, social media had proven a challenge while making the series. Blah, 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 blah. So we don't know what's going on. What we do know is something bad must have happened. This does not sound good. This sounds like they are trying trying to get ahead of whatever they are facing Probably. right now. Um, this does nothing for X-Men 97. X-Men 97 will more than likely be woke trash. Uh, oh, that didn't age well, did it? Woke trash. Right now, the show is not only extremely well-received by the fans, so well-received that Disney is super excited to get working on multiple seasons of it. It's critically praised. People in your space who aren't trying to grift off, off of outrage full-time have also said it's really good. Um, we talk about wokeness. Uh, as we were trying to tell you, as a lot of us were trying to tell you, the X-Men are inherently woke. They could not get any more woke than they already are because they just are. They're already diverse. <laughs> They're already dealing with social issues. They're already dealing with oppression from being mutants. There's literally nothing more they could do to be any woker than they already are. But you guys are fucking stupid and you didn't understand that. You wanted to push back against that. Let's have a conversation about that now uh, before we wrap this video up. So this didn't age well. This was an astroturfing attempt by Jeremy, Geeks and Gamers, which also a lot of other channels, Melanie Mack, um, Nerdrotic, Heel vs. Babyface, uh, Eric July, all, the, all these folks in the space took a shot at astroturfing X-Men 97. And the reality is, if, if you want to believe what they say about objectivity, then... The people have spoken, and objectively, X-Men 97 is a fantastic series. It's done really, really well. And if you guys would have just listened to us, the actual fans of the X-Men, the ones who've been reading it for 40, 50 years or more, um, if you would have listened to us and just gone, hey, they're right. It's, it's always been woke. It's always been diverse. They're going to cover social issues, political issues, things like that, marginalization, because that's what the X-Men do. Um, if you would have just listened to us and gone in and enjoyed the show, just like everybody else, you wouldn't have had to be making videos like this and then not mentioning it ever again, because you know that you were absolutely wrong. And this is part of the course for these channels. There's, there's two or three things they usually do when they're wrong about their astroturfing. The first is this, they won't talk about it again. They will not make a video about it. They won't bring it up unless there's some controversy. If some news comes out about Bo DeMaio, they will make a video about it. But barring that, there's nothing they'll say about the show if the fans are loving it, if, they're well, if it's well received. They will not do it. The other thing is to flip it around and pivot it against something else. So if there was another cartoon out that was more woke <laughs> than X-Men, if that was happening uh, and they hated that cartoon, they would talk about how much X-Men is destroying that cartoon. And they'd find a way to wrap it around that. Uh, the other thing is that they will wait till the season is over, start astroturfing the next season. Like they'll start going, hey, well, the first season was good, but you know how Disney is. You know what's going to happen. And they will start waking, waiting for news and tidbits about season two so they can start astroturfing again. This is part of the course for these guys. And uh, again, it was fun to go back and look at this because Jeremy's become the meme for this where it's like, oh, look what you were doing and then just silence crickets. You're not talking about it anymore. Uh, these folks don't fundamentally understand the media they're consuming. So at, at a level of just media literacy when it comes to TV shows, movies, things like that, they don't get it. They have found a niche core audience that also doesn't understand movies and TV shows. And what they've become is they have become the mouthpieces for people who are not creative enough to understand good and bad things in art. So everything to them is a simple equation. That's how they view the world. That's how they view art. And as long as you do that, as long as you're someone that consumes art and entertainment that way, you will always run the risk of looking like an idiot. And if you're okay with that, then be the idiot. Just like Jeremy. Jeremy.